Good evening. From where I am, the sun has already set. Um, and therefore, I feel like bringing some light into this room. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Zara. Thank you, Wailed. Thank you, Glen Vivian Institution, for creating this amazing little platform where we can reconnect. I'm a live artist. This is as live as it gets. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'd like to take you on a little journey, if I may, through 180 images. Each image is four seconds long. This might, we might be caught up in delays and losses in translations and glitches in internet connections. I'd like to jump right in and play my slideshow for you. I'm trying to, just before I do that, I have to hit share screen. I have to remember to do that. Share screen. And here we go. Water. I'm very attracted to the elements. Land, water, sky, and most lately, fire. I place my life somewhere in between the mountains and the ocean. And I'm, I'm obsessed with making drawings. This is one of the other core elements of what I do as an artist. I make drawings. I make drawings to understand myself. I make drawings to locate myself. I make drawings of things I see or want to see. I want to take you to two fairly large institutional projects that I did over the past three years. The first one was a project that was done for Documenta. Documenta is an exhibition that happens once in five years in Kassel, Germany. And I was invited by a young curator, Natasha Jinwala, to, to, to activate with live art an exhibition that was not just going to happen in Castle, Germany, but because Adam Shimchik, the main curator of the exhibition and the director of the festival, was really provocative, wanted to place the exhibition in Athens as well as Castle. But what popped up in my head very quickly was not just Athens and Castle, but I needed to plot everything in between. While Athens was a city in Greece, and in 2017, when the world was caught up in a massive refugee crisis and boatloads of people were moving through the Mediterranean Sea, seeking refuge in Europe, I was making my way up the coast, through the landscape, through Bulgaria, through Romania, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Hungary, and then finally into Germany. Everywhere I went on this 3,000 kilometer long performance trip, which lasted 30 days, I stopped. I set up my tent, I pitched it, it's where I lived, it's where I cooked, it's where I ate, and it's where I drew. Whatever I saw from outside my tent, I drew on the canvas, on the walls of the tent. Setting the tent up, bringing it down, eating, sleeping, drinking, chatting, welcoming people into the tent, were all part of the characters and the personas that I was trying to create and was all part of the performance. So in a sense, I feel like I walk a very fine line between reality and fiction, between what is a performance and what is real life, between art and life, between drawing and theater, between photography and sculpture. What I do is not always con is, 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 is generally considered as solo practice, but I feel like I'm, I need a community of people around me, not just as audience, but as, but as co-producers, as co-conspirers to make work like this happen. 
in this case, every single town that I stopped in, in this case, you're looking at Sofia and Bulgaria, I made an alliance with the people so that I would be allowed into these places and I would be welcomed into these places and I would be able to carry out this drawing. Every two locations I went to, I would, I would install a brand fresh new piece of canvas on the wall as if they were pages from my sketchbook that I kept rolling and taking with me. This journey was lyrical, but also really troubling. For example, I, I was able to, 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 to get past a lot of stereotypes that I might have had about people that live in specific certain areas or about how border control works or about what hospitality means. And in this case, while I was being hosted by different places that I went to, I was also playing host by constructing this soft space, this mobile space, always wanting to make people feel comfortable in there. There was always something to eat. There was always something, a little something to drink. There was always a little gift that people from the villages brought for us, a brick of cheese, two liters of olive oil, three liters of sheep's milk. I mean, we were overwhelmed with the love, hospitality, and trust that we got from a lot of people and places. I suppose being, walking the fine line as well between what looks threatening and what looks gentle is something as well that I'm interested in. And here, this, I was very aware of not just the color of my skin, but also just the things that I was bringing with me and what would those things mean to the people in there. And therefore, the tent that I was constructing changed meaning everywhere I went. In some places, it was a classroom, like for example, in Budapest, it was a, it was a workshop that we did with, with with, with the, the director of the school of the, da of, of the Budapest uh, School of Contemporary Dance. So everywhere I went, um, I, was, I was connecting with people who I had a common language with, where I would be able to explain what it is that I was doing and those that were under understood what it is that I was doing were welcoming me. I went on not just one trip through this landscape, I had to go to, through three in order to build these relationships, to build these alliances, because I was going to bring a very large imposing object and place it right in the middle of their plaza or their school. One of the things that really struck me was, uh, was how, if, for example, in Bulgaria, I was very struck by how empty Bulgaria is. You know, by, by 2060, certain surveys predict that there will be no rural life in Bulgaria. And that really affected me and that really went through me like a bullet because it just felt that that life that I aspire for, which is what I have right now, to live amongst nature, to be quiet, to be away from the humdrum of the city, was seeming less and less accessible. And a, a, a healthy village life a healthy village community, a thriving village economy was missing. And what I felt was an abandoned, a sense of abandonment is something that I fear immensely. The journey ended in Castle on the platform of a railway station, an abandoned railway station. And I laced together the, 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 the eight different locations where I stopped with this almost failed desire to create one continuous landscape so that one would not be able to tell the difference between a Bulgaria and a Greece or a Germany or a Slovakia as a tree is a tree and a rose is a rose and it doesn't matter what name you call it by. While certain projects seek to take me far, far away and far out of what is considered as familiar art spaces. I'm also really interested in how the context of art is something that creates a very important lens and a layer and a critical layer that I'm really interested in engaging with. So while I circumvented the landscape for drawing a line through landscape in, in, in 2017, I went in to the museum with my invitation to activate the Metropolitan Museum with a piece that lasted uh, nine days. Over the nine days, I would occupy 
different galleries in the museum. And these were heavily researched as to why I wanted to occupy these places and what it is that I wanted to activate with occupying them. In this case, I was concerned in taking some a very simple aspect of landscape painting that is very, uh, very much at the center of what it is that I do, which is dealing with elements of land, water, and sky. And I wanted to literally deconstruct them and to create this large impossible painting in a museum that's very precious about its objects. It's very precious about its proximity to not just objects, but also people. Where that's gonna go with social distancing, I have no idea. But in a sense, the crowds of people that gathered around this performance seemed pedestrian to me in some sense, but also overwhelming and powerful as I had 39,000 eyes gaze, gaze at me as I unpacked the la a landscape painting, dividing land, water, and sky in three different locations. And in each location, I was reacting to uh, an, an object or an exhibition. For example, in the first section with where I was rendering big cumulus clouds and a gathering storm in the sky, I was in Egypt. I was in front of the temple, the majestic, imposing temple of Dindur. And when I'm here in the passageway between arts from the Asias, Africas, and Oceania, and modern and contemporary on the other side, with a, with a soloit wall drawing and a, 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 a very modernist statement staring at me, I rendered land and walked into the Oceania section, sort of undefinably transformed to, to this sort of wearing a body mask, like what, what one would see asthmat tribesmen wear. But in a sense, this was this kind of pastiche of what looked like a, like a, a Pollock painting and uh, uh, a bank robber. Um, the last location, where it, which is where I wanted to render water, I, 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 I landed up at the space between, at the at the Lehman Courtyard. This is Shane Zaveri, who you see on your screen, who has invited me for this exhibition and who is the curator for this exhibition. Um, uh, it is here that the, the painting, in a sense, takes three different forms. In the first one, it's sort of like a Bedouin tent under which I take, took shelter. In the second, it's a, it's, 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 it sits on a wall, it hangs on a wall and it drapes. And in the third, the poles that were used to prop it up as a tent sort of become a, a way in which to create this sort of theatrical tableau, uh, in a sense, wanting to draw the performance to its climax. These are two partners of mine, uh, Mortimer Chatterjee and Tara Lal. Uh, they're also my gallerists, they're great friends. And, you know, they've been such a support to me. And I, and, I, and I reiterate this, that these things don't happen alone. All the photographs that you see on your screen right now have been taken by Shivani Gupta, a photographer that I've been working with for 10 years, for 15 years. The costume designer is Lois Braganza, someone I've been working with for 10 years. The, the, the sets have been designed by Aisha Kunwani, someone who I have known for like eight years. So as you see that a lot of this gets not just created by the desire to create something, but it's about the love of making and the love between people that translates themselves into these deeply solid, solo melancholic works. There was a sound element that, that worked with this piece as well. And, and it, it, it was played by, by um, a, a sound artist that designed the sound for me. And here you see me sort of crawl past various vitrines, sort of looking like uh, as if I'm, I'm half in and half outside of my skin. And that's how the, the performance ends. And with that, also my presentation. Thank you. <laughs>